I'm here on Poth Road in Shoesdale where the owners of this barber say that they are opening their doors tomorrow, defying the lockdown restrictions inspired by Harry in Berwick. They're putting a call out to everyone that wants their hair cut to come here from tomorrow from 8.30 a.m. And they're asking any barbers and hairdressers that are looking for work in these times to give them a buzz. 90173727. We've just decided that we're going to open our doors tomorrow because we just, basically if we don't, we're going to go bankrupt. And so why now? What's inspired you to do this? Seeing Harry open the other day and seeing the amazing support he got just made us go, well, even if there's clientele of ours that are against what we're doing, we know that for every maybe customer we'll lose, hopefully we'll get another 20, 30 customers in, in this place. So Harry's inspired you guys to Absolutely. do this? Absolutely, yeah. There's a local salon in Hughesdale that say that you've inspired them to open their doors tomorrow from 8.30. Oh, How do you react? Absolutely staggered. I'm wrapped because that's what we're trying to do is to get the small business open so they can support their families, support their own livelihood and get on with life. Just brilliant. Roger is new to Australia. He's on a temporary residency. We've had not one cent from nothing. the government for our business, even personally, no Centrelink, nothing. I've just had my parenting payments cut off just who knows why. So we're basically like, if we don't work, we can't pay our rent, we can't, can't do anything. And this is a new business. We literally opened a month before the shutdown. Yeah, yeah. nearly three, three weeks and before. Weeks yeah. we were open, and then we had to close our doors after investing all of our money into this business. So it was new, and then, so you, you bought the business over? Yeah, we actually started it from scratch. Okay. So we bought, got the lease, worked, you know, we spent like three weeks doing the fit out. We did all the work ourselves, just to try to save money. And everything we had, we invested, being, like I said, new to Australia. And and also the other thing that kind of really inspired us is Roger's from Syria. This is the second time he's opened his own salon. He's been a hairdresser for 16 years, maybe more. Yeah. And um, the first time he lost his salon... <laughs> <laughs> um, the first time it was he lost his salon because of war um, and this time he's like why is this happening again like literally open a salon and then it gets taken away from me and I thought well this is a war but it's an invisible war it's a psychological war and I just thought well we shouldn't just and then I kept thinking about that I'm like we have to do something about it so you had, you had a hairdresser in Syria yeah and so you had to shut the business because of the war yeah yeah who's a better hairdresser you or the Zohan from Israel Maybe me. <laughs> yeah. And the war begins again. Yeah. <laughs> what about uh, dog salon? Yeah. Uh, it's open, you know? The next door we have um, the uh, dog groomers and across the road. And we're really happy that they were able to open. They opened two weeks ago, but it doesn't make sense that they can open and cut animal hair, but yet human hair is not allowed to be cut. It doesn't make sense to me. Today we've recorded uh, two new cases overnight. What would you say to those who say you are single-handedly putting the entire state at risk? I would say that is a lie. We only have to look at the testing centres in Shepparton, people lining up, no social distancing. We're not buying into the narrative because if we really believe this was about um, safety and this was about um, you know containing a virus, we would not open our doors. But the cost that this is having and the fallout is so much greater than any safety and not only that it's about restoring dignity and we just refuse to buy into this narrative because it's it's a lie and we, we refuse to participate in it anymore can you guys afford ten thousand dollar fine if victoria police rock up here when you open tomorrow absolutely not absolutely not but we can't afford not to open either because before the ten thousand dollar fine how are we even going to pay our rent yeah. we're going to pay rent for this shop we've got to pay rent for our house we've got two little kids and for those that want to maybe judge what we're doing, we don't get any government hands out. So what would you do if you were in our position? This lockdown looks like it's about to end with or without Daniel Andrews. Avi Amini here for Rebel News. So is there any, you can fix this? Brother, I cannot promise miracle. <laughs> if you like that report you just saw, make sure to like it. Press the little button at the bottom there. Let people know you love it and then share it and subscribe to Rebel News on YouTube now.